to be with you. My name is Deacon Coco Lyons. I am a campus minister at the UNL Lutheran Center. So if you um, are ever in the area of UNL, please stop by and come see us. I am filling in for Pastor Kim this morning and we continue to extend our prayers for her for healing um, and for um, her safety as she navigates um, the next week or two. So, a few announcements before we get started. Um, I encourage you to read the back of your bulletin, check uh, this, I don't know if things are posted on so your social media, check your websites, talk to your friendly neighborhood church goer, um, but I will announce a few of these announcements as they are written. Today is Don and Millie's day, which means you get 20% off of your um, ticket, which comes back to support, oh no, 20% of the ticket comes back to support St. Andrews. So if you mentioned that you're from St. Andrews at Don in Millie's, 20% um, of that purchase will come back to St. Andrews, which is pretty dang cool if you ask me. Um, the Memorial Committee will meet in the lounge next Sunday after worship. So stick around after worship next Sunday if you're on the Memorial Committee. 
Um, the Camp Carol Joy Holling Quilt Auction is on this coming Saturday, which I always hear is a really fun um, and exciting day to go hang out at camp, see the sights of camp, hear the sounds of camp, maybe purchase a really beautiful quilt if you have um, the opportunity to do so. That So that is um, on Saturday, July 29th at 9 a.m. And then the final one I will announce is y'all are going to the Salt Dogs game on August 1st. That is a Tuesday, and I think it is Triple Play Tuesday. So if you bring three um, non-perishable food items for the Lincoln Food Pantry, you'll get a free ticket in. It's also teacher, teacher appreciation night, so go out, support the Salt Dogs, the Lincoln Food Pantry, and the local teachers in your area. With that, please stand as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. I find the right place in my bulletin. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. People of God, let us gather to worship and praise God's name. I give thanks to you, O God, with my whole heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love for me. You have delivered my soul from the depths. God says, know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us acknowledge to ourselves and to each other those ways we fall short from what God intends for us, all of which God already knows. Abba, Father, where we are in bondage to sin, set us free. Restore us as your children and joint heirs with Christ. You are our hope. Lead us in the way everlasting. Amen. My fellow children of God, do not fear, for our God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God's hand shall lead us and hold us fast. So be reconciled with God and at peace with one another. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the lay of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may share signs of peace in ways you are comfortable.
first reading for this morning is from Isaiah chapter 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let, him, let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from the old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be done. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from, from of old and declared it? You are my witness. Is there any, good, any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please read responsive with me, Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O God, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give me your strength to your ser give your strength to your servant. Give the child of your maid save the child of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? of our Lord comes from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds from the field, of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone who listen, who, with ears listen. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the children forward for a children's time. We might need a few more of these. There's 
There's another one. There we go. Do we need one more? There, oh, we'll take a peek. Good. There's one little spot here if you would like that. There you go. Good morning. I don't know that I've introduced myself to you. I'm Deacon Coco. I am a similar to a pastor, but I do more specialized ministry. So I am a campus minister, and I do a lot of work with people who go to college, some, so some older kids like you who are still in school. Um, right now is really quiet at the Lutheran Center, so I'm here with you because it's summer, and I have some time to go around to the area congregations and um, explore and meet new people. So it is so good to be with you this morning. Thanks for having me. I have a question. Have any of you planted anything? Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry? Have you planted anything, Henry? Who's Henry? Are you Henry? Henry. What have you planted, Henry? <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> A lot. Maybe. This thing I planted, um, flowers. Yeah, yeah. Flowers. Do you know what kind of flowers? Oh, okay, so like a yellow color. Yeah, cool. Those are going to be beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, you sound like my type of gardener. I, I, don't, I don't garden very well. Has anybody else planted anything? Maybe some vegetables or fruit maybe? Helped your mom or dad or grandparents? Yeah? You planted a cabbage. Those are fun. I'm, have you har harvested any cabbage yet? No, not yet. Maybe soon. We have lots of flowers. Lots of <laughs> yes. We have lots of friends in this congregation. No. I planted some things this year. So I have three big pots in front of my house. And one has a flower called zinnias in there. And they have started to, to pop up and to, to flower. So there's like purple and orange and yellow zinnias. And then I have a pot full of lettuce that I get to harvest and make salads out of. And then I have this other pot. This other pot hasn't started flowering yet, but I planted a ton of wildflowers in there. And right now, all it looks like are weeds. But I haven't given up on them yet. I have to practice a lot of patience and wait for them to grow to see if they're weeds. You're waiting for patience for your hair to grow back. Me too. You know, our hair grows, our flowers grow, our cabbages grow, and we have to have a lot of patience to see if they're going to live or if in my case they're going to die or for your yellow ones, yeah, you have to have a lot of patience to see what things are going to be when they grow up. So we have to have a lot of patience for when you grow up, too, because we don't know what you're going to be yet. We have a lot of hopes. Your mom gave you a mohawk, so you're waiting for some hair to grow back, too. Who else got a haircut this week? Yeah, haircuts, haircuts all around. There we go. Maybe that's an after-church thing. Yeah, good job. So... <laughs> Wonderful. So as we wait and have patience, we also know that God is with us through our waiting and that in order for us to tend to our garden and wait for our flowers, our yellow flowers and our cabbages to grow up, all we, all we can do is wait and we can water them and talk really nicely to them to help them grow and to put all of our love into them and so that they grow up to be big and strong and help us enjoy um, the fruits of our labor, right? So kind of like that, our gospel told us that there's weeds and there's wheat in this field and our field is like our faith communities and our communities all around us who help us grow and help us kind of weed out those those plants that aren't so helpful in our lives, which might be like being mean to our siblings or not listening to our parents. And so with that patience and that waiting, we can sow seeds of love and we can be kind to our parents and kind to our siblings and to our friends um, as we wait to see what we're gonna be when we grow up. All right, one last question. Oh, yeah, but we can't dump too much water on them, otherwise that'll also kill them. 
Yeah, it has to be a good balance, just like God has in us, right? God has a good balance of telling us what to do and allowing us to do it too, right? So. Oh, two different styles of gardening. Oh, well, hopefully they'll come back. We'll just have to wait and see. Or maybe try again next year and plant more yellow ones. How's that sound? Should we pray together? All right, can you repeat after me? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us patience and teaching us how to love. As we wait to grow, and as we see what you have done in our lives. Amen. Amen. All right, go have fun. I don't know what's up next, but hopefully your gardens all bear a lot of fruit and yellow flowers and cabbages. Funny story about my one pot of plants. I don't know if they're weeds or not, but my mom came, and she's like a master gardener, and she started picking <laughs> the non-flowering things yet, and I was like, don't pick anything, Mom. I don't know if those are flowers or not. And she goes, Coco, they're weeds. And I'm like, no, they're not. At least they're growing, and there's like greenery on my steps. So we'll check back later and see if they actually flower this fall. I, I don't know. I'm not convinced yet. It is so good to be with you all this morning. Thank you for having me. Now, imagine with me planting yourselves within this gospel text. St. Andrew's, this building and congregation is your faith community, is the field in which wheat and weeds and seeds are planted. And this field extends beyond your doors, out into the surrounding world around you, into this beautiful neighborhood. And then you, each individual person, are the seeds being planted, having both sinner and saint within you, but being called by God to live into imagining everyone as being made in the image of God, which we theological types like to call imagio dei. Instead of drawing imaginary lines in the sand of evil and good, we see each person as both and. As the seeds are planted within this field, as you are baptized and brought into a faith community, there is no way of knowing who you will be other than that you are God's beloved children. All you can do in life is wait. Wait to live, wait to die, wait for the hope of it all in Christ. Because the ultimate nature and destiny of every disciple will not be revealed until the judgment of the end of the age. So what do we do with all of this waiting? Being made in the image of God calls us to a unique going out and coming in as people of faith. There's a movement between the external and internal work that is never ending and can sometimes be quite difficult, honestly. Waiting calls us to patience and trusting that God is at work in the world around us through our love, through our love for God, through our love of ourselves, through our love of others, and through the, God, the love of God through us. Maggio Dei is the self-actualization of God's love in humankind. And as humans, we are then called to love God, and in order to love God, we must love one another. As you wait, you love. But we all know that love is not always as easy as sending a Valentine's Day card or loading an empty dishwasher or spending quality time with a beloved friend. And while these things are good and important love languages, the love we give and receive on a daily basis is so much more. Because of our humanness, we mess up. Humans are messy creatures, as you may know. We may have just cut someone off on our way to church with a little bit of road rage. Perhaps a customer at work made you angry, so you kind of snipped back at them. Um, or maybe on a bigger scale, there's votes and bills in the legislature de demonizing um, people and, and kids who just want to exist as God has created them to be. Where is God's love in all of that? At the Lutheran Center, 
we have what is called the Upper Room, which is our Christian intentional living community where we can house up to 10 undergraduate students attending school in and around Lincoln. And as the community director, I am called to help each student see God at work in and through this community. It is hard and holy work and I just lost my place. Okay, it is hard and holy work, but one that has helped strengthen our community and aided in the growth of each student. Each week during the school year, we have a meeting as a community where we talk about the realities of living with one another in accordance with our covenants and God's love. Sometimes the conversations have an easy fix, like developing a chore chart or teaching another person how to properly use the dishwasher. Other conversations are difficult and may carry on for many weeks on end. These are the conversations that matter most to the community and the lives of our students. One such conversation was centered on supporting one another through physical, emotional, and spiritual presence. Now, as you can imagine, each individual had a different idea as to what support through presence meant. Even I had to check my own heart and look deep within myself to acknowledge that my lack of understanding of each student's needs of support may have hurt their feelings. There was the actual physical going to an event type of support of presence. There was the moving of a meeting to support the person's event that they cared deeply about or were called to. And then perhaps there was just a checking in afterwards. Each type of support was good and holy. Now, as we had these conversations week after week, we as a community were grounded in scripture and our covenants of aspiration, both of which helped us a lot realign our understanding of the situation to how God was at work within each person. You see, our covenants of aspiration focused on God's call in our lives and the lives of the community members around us, which meant God was at work through our music education major just as much as our political science major, just as much as our meteorologist, and so on and so forth. Each student's eyes were opened to the vastness of God at work in the world around us and that God's love looks different to each person. As eyes and hearts and minds were opened to God at work in the world around us, we were better able to understand, God, understand God's call to love our neighbor. But every few weeks, we would have the same conversation again and again, showing the ebb and flow of our humanness and imperfection while trying to get it right. We were just trying to weed our garden. This just goes to show that just as we are the seeds being planted in God's community of faith and beyond, there are weeds and wheat sown within each one of us at the same time. There is a reality of being both sinner and saint as we cling to God's command to love that propels us forward as people of God in the world around us, knowing that we will mess up. You won't always get it right. You will stumble. The weeds may grow stronger at some points in your lives and at others the wheat will flourish. Through it all though, you are not alone. The fields of your faith community, St. Andrews and the community beyond, stands through drought and famine and bountiful harvests, giving you a solid foundation on which to take root and to grow, waiting for the hope of it all through your baptismal promises watering your lives with God's love so that you may nourish the world around you with the love of God. Trust that God will sort out the weeds from the wheat and you are loved through it all. On such a journey as this, it is not our job to determine who is within and who is beyond, who are weeds and who are wheat. It is rather our job to imagine everyone as belonging to God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession today, we are going to do something probably a little bit different for you. Um, at the Lutheran Center, we like to start each petition and then allow um, empty, silent space for the congregation to fill in with their own prayers. So feel free to speak one or multiple word um, prayers after each petition, following in line with each category. Um, you can sit or stand, whatever is most comfortable for you. <laughs> you can sit. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the church universal, for its ministries and the mission of the gospel. for the well-being of creation. For peace and justice in the world, the nations, and those in authority, and for this faith community. For the poor, the oppressed, the sick, the bereaved, the lonely, and especially for Pastor Kim.
for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For St. Andrew and the ministries, For those who are the faithful departed. People of God, for who and what else <clears throat> do we pray? Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may stand. Gathered into the one, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought fire into being. For your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom and from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.
Lord God, you have blessed us with an abundant promise. In gratitude, we offer you what we carry in our hearts, minds, spirits, and pockets. God, our creator, still claims us in love. Jesus, our redeemer, lives again by the word of God. The Holy Spirit, sustainer of all creation, breathes courage into our hearts. The triune God blesses us this day and always with love and mercy. Go in peace, share that love and mercy with others. We go with love and we walk in mercy, reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks be to God. 